me, Teacher Emily, and Isabel. You know her from class. We're really excited to join you again. We have laid out what we'll be doing moving forward starting March 30th. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we'll be doing recorded videos for you so that we give you the ideas of what to explore, what you can do, and there will be links on our family page of PDF files that you can download. Normally, do we use worksheets in our classroom? No. No, worksheets are considered, even in conventional education, busy work. But right now, we need to keep busy, don't we? And some parents are working from home, and so it's a good thing to have some things that can keep us busy, but that are also appropriate for us and what we're exploring, and they invite us to explore. So that it's not just writing down words or copying things, but actually us creating, right? So we've got some creative things to do, don't we? Should we share them? We should. Uh, let's start with our... Let's start with... Where are you going? Let's start with our potato art. Oh, are we going to start with potato art? All right, we can start with potato art. Hold on, I'll bring it over. I got it. Okay. Wait, where'd our potato go? Our big one. Oh, we've got it. Well, let's first talk about potatoes. Come sit down. Come sit down. First, we'd like to talk to you about potatoes. potatoes. Now, our potatoes, do you remember what they are? They're called a what? Starts with t. Turbivore. <laughs> Turbivore. <laughs> tubers. They're tubers. Um, and rhizomes, actually. So the rhizome is the, the tuber. Tuber means hump. It's a Latin root is hump. And there are rhizomes which are connected together. And you can see these eyes here, maybe, hopefully. Once your potato grows eyes, it's on its way out of its lifespan. Um, and some people believe you should not eat potatoes that have grown eyes and that you should not eat the eyes. So you can see these little green sprouts everywhere. You can plant these and grow yourself more potatoes once they've started growing eyes. And you might remember in the backyard here at school, we had potato bins, didn't we? And then there was an unfortunate accident. We learned about fire safety, didn't we, and magnifiers. <laughs> It's funny now, but it wasn't funny when the backyard was on fire. So we have uh, added some new trees, fruit trees, to our backyard area. Both of them are pears. Both of them are different types of pear trees. It's true. Uh, and they came in these wonderful 40-gallon tubs, which we're going to use as our new potato um, bins. So you want two bins that can fit inside each other. One you're going to leave alone. And the second one you're going to cut with little windows. And these windows will help us later to do what, Isabel? What do you think? To grab think? at the potatoes. To grab at the potatoes, right? Do you remember when we did that last year, friends? Some of you were here when we had potatoes and we grabbed through. So. No, we actually have burnt, like, the top and we were in our hands. So, yeah, at one point when, when they burned up and they were melted, we took out the potatoes that were in there from the top. That's true. In order to do this at home, all you need are two containers. They don't have to be really large, but you can grow... Uh, potatoes vertically in a narrow or not very uh, wide circumference container as long as it's really tall and you want to cover half in dirt to start put your potato in and then put just a little bit of dirt on enough to cover the potato in a couple days time you'll see some shoots the actual plant of the potato will grow up and there will be big green leaves do you remember that once you see the leaves then you cover the potato fully with dirt all the way up to the top of your container and you just let it sit. And you can let as much time go by as you want. That's what's great about tubers. Those rhizomes just spread. Another plant that uses that are bluebells. You see a lot of those in your yard, they're weeds. Blueberries? Bluebells, not blueberries, bluebells. <laughs> the ones along the back of the fence in the backyard in the school, those are bluebells, they're weeds. Okay. So as Isabel mentioned, we discussed potato art. Today we have a potato that we've cut in half, okay. and we have. That's what you mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Yeah, that's potatoes. true. We have a cookie cutter. That's a so hard. we're going to take that cookie cutter and push it, down it into the, the potato like that. Like that. And you're going to want to pop it out. We're not going to pop it out yet. Not yet. Now you're going to either ask an adult or very carefully get a sharp knife or your wavy cutter. And you're going to cut the side of the potato into our cookie cutter. Would you like to do that? Or would you like to help? You want, I need you to hold You want me to hold the potato? Okay. Do you want me to hold the white wavy cutter at all? No, I'm fine. Okay. Got it? Pick up. You feel that? that? That hard noise and that crunch as you cutting into the cookie cutter. 
There we go. Now, do you think you made it all the way around? Let's check and see. <clears throat> now, you're going to leave that cookie cutter in as long as you can because we want to protect the shape we're making. And we'll slowly separate that ring we cut away from the potato. And voila, we have, what is that? A cookie cutter, which you can actually pull up the dough. <laughs> we have a stamp. Now we know that there are a lot of people at home who don't have full schools and tens of thousands of dollars of, yeah, does, right? tens of thousands of dollars of um, Montessori equipment and trays in their home. And you don't have to use those necessarily. Mm -hmm. You can use a simple piece of tin foil as your paint palette. You can use lots of things as paints, like can't you? Like you can use blue, green. Mm -hmm. What if you didn't have paints? What else do you think you could use? Do you know? Crushed up flowers. Crushed up flowers. You can make. Yeah, you can. You can experiment with making your own. Wait one second. Pigments. Um, with fruits and berries, things like that. What about uh, food coloring? That could work, right? We don't have that. You can take some yogurt or shaving cream and mix some food coloring in there. Make your own paints, finger paints. And yeah, like that. that's what you did. That's what we did. That's right on our sensory board ones. Now, if you'd like to add extra challenge for your, your children, you can draw some stems and ask them to stamp the flowers at the tops of the stems. And that becomes uh, a convergence and eye tracking activity to see if they can line things up. It uses oh. hand-eye coordination and fine motor skills to put something precisely where you want it to go. So you can leave it blank stems, or you can allow them to design however they want. Okay. Go ahead. Can you make some flowers for me? Oh, I think you just popped it. <laughs> it's a little slippery. Just press like a stamp. There you go. And release. There we go. Can I show everyone or do you want to do the second one? You don't want to get a little bit. There you go. All right. And there you go. There are some flowers and an oopsie flower. <laughs> but there are no mistakes in art, are there? Just happy. happy it's in Van Gogh. It's in Van Gogh. That's right. Okay. And, um... When you're done, you can compost these, of course. So they're compostable stamps, right? And you can use it again. You can cut this off and then make another stamp. You can go as short as you want with well, it. Should we make a different stamp? We could. I don't have any other small stamps right now, though. I would like to show another thing that we do in class here sometimes. Potatoes. So, well, not potatoes, fruits. We discussed um, slicing as an option. Oh All you need, this, unfortunately, Ikea is closed, but these cutting boards came from Ikea in a set of three. But any cutting board will work for your child. You, we provide uh, everything to be coated. So our apple cutting has an apple dish, but any dish will work. And in the morning when you wake up, if you have work from home, can take I an apple. Do do so let me go ahead and just slice it in half first. Slice it in half for your child. Place it in the bowl. Place either your knife or your wavy chopper next to it. And we usually have these on the shelf like so. And Isabel will show you how this work is done when you take it to a table. So you can see Isabel is demonstrating the two hands on top of each other technique that we use for wavy choppers and things that have these types of handles. Otherwise, it's hand on the handle and other hand on top of the blade pushing down. And at this point, most of our second year students, children who've been here two full years or moving on their second year, know how to do this work. Um, all of the third years or children who've been here two and a half years do. Uh, some of our newest children might not have had this presentation yet, um, just because of the requirement in the upper body strength and hand strength. But, whoop, then sometimes that happens. If you know what to do, if it falls on the floor, what do we do? Put it in. The compost. Put it in the compost. And get a new one. And get a new one. I just want to eat these apples right now. Yeah, you do. We always show them to use the tongs, which again works those fine motor skills. You can see our extensor pulses, um, longus, and brevis. I'm going to go get a new and apple. These are all of our important muscles used for writing. And you can ask your child to use three fingers, or they can use all of them, depending on the tongs you have. And if you don't have tongs, of course they can just use their hands to move them. Um, but every extra step is an extra sequenced part that they have to remember and different muscles that they have to use. I got a new apple. You did. Let's save that up for a minute. You can eat these if you'd like while we talk about some other things that we're doing. <clears throat> so we've talked about uh, the last video about how much time is going to pass until we see each other again. And at that point when we discussed it, we uh, were offering
offering families the option of coming to school or not coming to school. And as of two hours ago this morning, the Early Learning Department, which regulates and oversees learning in the state of Oregon, and especially um, early learning programs like ours, declared that they didn't find the governor's mandates to encompass enough, and they have demanded that all child care facilities that are licensed through them in the Office of Child Care are currently closed unless they have reopened as an emergency center, which means they are only supporting uh, families who are working emergency type jobs. So people who are working groceries, we always need our groceries and medicine and things like that. Hospitals? Hospitals, yes. Um, and we, we are not open right now. So we definitely aren't gonna see each other for about 30 days. So what did we determine we were gonna have in 30 days? Definitely some zinnias. Your sister was helping with us watering earlier. So Suddenly. we're watering our plants. We hope you're watering yours. What do you think, Isabel? Anything growing yet in there? Mm -mm. No, nothing's growing in ours yet. Anything growing in yours yet? Comment down below if you think anything's <laughs> growing. Well, you might remember last year, we were growing in our four giant pots that are concrete in front of the play gym, some very special fruits that often are not... Tomatoes. Oh, often not thought of as fruits, as vegetables, yeah, tomatoes. We had four different types of cherry tomatoes, and we we measured them every, do you remember, was it Monday or Friday? Friday. Every Friday we measured them, and we came up with a chart, and we posted it on our interest board. And so we will be doing that again here. Isabel will be doing that in our family while we are away from each other. We have squash, eggplant, pumpkins, and tomatoes. So we have made a chart. This PDF will be available in our family group. And it lists our plant species, which would be the tomatoes, the squash, the pumpkins, and the eggplants. And you can have an adult help you write those if you'd like. We have measurements one, two, three, and four, because hopefully after four weeks, we will all definitely see each other again, don't you think? Remember to comment if you need some seeds from us. At the end, we have the total growth. And the total growth, do you know how we would figure out the total growth if we took a starting measurement and had three more measurements, a fourth measurement at the end? How would we add them all up together? Well, you would, you would subtract. If you want to know the total amount of inches something grew, if it grew 5, then 10, then 15, then 20, right? The total amount of growth from the first to the last, from 5 to 20, would be 15 inches. Okay? Or if you like, you can just use the total that it grew height-wise. That's up to you. So if you want to do some addition, absolutely. You can start adding things in and see how many times you measured. Um, we have which plant grew the most from the first measurement to the fourth. So the difference between those two is what we want to know. And difference tells us that we subtract uh, our subtrahends. And we have spaces for plant one, plant two, plant three, and plant four. And we have little blocks. And you'll have to know by the end what the numerals on here are going to be because we don't know how tall they're going to get by the fourth measurement, do we? Zero. Yeah, that's zero, zero right? Mm -hmm. And here's a space for those of us who aren't quite ready with the numbers or the letters, and that's fine. Remember Montessori, we all learn at our own pace. It's not a race. So we do our personal best. Here's a place to draw your favorite picture of your favorite plant, okay? So that's our plant growth chart, and that's something you can fill in. I see a pumpkin sprout. Do you? I can't tell. Mm, I don't see anything sprouting. I'd be really quick in one day. Two Boink. days. Boink. <laughs> the other thing we have is a phonology wheel. It's a great word. Let's say it together. Phonology. Phonology. Let's clap the syllables. Phonology. Oh. Phonology. Four. <laughs> and that sound is it's one pH. of our, it is, it's one of our alternate spelling packet type words. So a PH, Latin words usually are spelled with PH. We've talked about that before. Saxophone. <laughs> Saxophone, yes. yes. And phone. And phone, yes, yes, telephone. So up at the top, you'll see your name. Your and date. You'll see, or you can put your date too if you want. Right here we have what looks to be like a donut or a pizza pie split into four Looks sections. like a pizza. Looks like a pizza Not pie. a donut. Not a donut. Donut with a circle. <clears throat> Well, I mean, we took out the lines, but think about, we've been talking about fractions with some of you. One, two, three, four. There are four pieces in this family. So any one piece is called one of four or one fourth. Fourth is our ordinal number, right? Fourth. 
In this outside crust area, since we're calling it a pizza, we'll put the date. So let's say you start on Tuesday. You want to be a Tuesday measurer. I am observing, and you're going to write what you're observing, or you can draw a picture of what you're observing, or you can put just any mark that you know how to make. So plant, your mark could be a Or you could write like the first letter of it. Yeah, puff for plant or pumpkin. Or if you, have, if you can hear some of those sounds, sound it out your head. Remember, we talk about expanding. So let's expand pumpkin for our friends. P. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. P. Uh. Mm. K. K. I. N. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Stretch the ribbon out. Stretch it out and then put it back together. Pumpkin. That's what we did in the Yeah, time. I know. And then we have, I record my observations each week on, and those are the days of our week. We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So whichever day you choose, you might want to do it. Which one comes first, Monday or Sunday? That depends. If you're going with the calendar, it's Sunday. If you're going with the work week, it's Monday. Because we call days that start in S weekends, Saturday and Sunday. There's a whole great story about that in your leisure class. And I wonder what was the first grow to make little seed. Oh, but how did it grow? How did it grow? We don't know. Well, well then the plant. Let's go back to our phonology rule for a second and discuss. So the first week you'll put your drawing here and your date there. The second week, the third week, and the fourth week. And I would love on Tuesdays and Thursdays when we join for our Zoom meetings for you to bring these and show us what you're exploring, what kind of growth you're tracking, what interesting things are in your house, around your house, or out where you're allowed to go right now. So that's our phonology wheel. And that will also be a PDF that you can download and fill out. You can download as many. So maybe you want to look at three or four different plants. We're choosing to say plants right now because that's what we're studying. But what else could you look at, do you think? Insects. Insects, you could if you find if you find some insect eggs, you could draw pictures of those, and there are definitely four stages of life. Do vertebrates look like brown circles? They're kind of white opalescent, kind of clear. We have some um, some models of worms. We're going to study those when we study our insects, definitely. Oh, because I've seen brown eggs that are like circles. Interesting. Brown we eggs are circles. We could explore those. Oh, like in little packs. Yeah, sure. Okay. What else? What else could you do? Do you think? If you had cut flowers, like we have some cut flowers, don't we, Isabel, from the yard? You want to bring those over to show everyone? So we cut these flowers a, a couple of days ago. Do you think they're going to stay days like ago. this? Five di no, not five days ago. <laughs> Do you think they're going to stay like this? Beautiful like this? No, and eventually no. they'll die. Eventually they do. And what, what's going to happen as they do that? Are they going to stay so beautiful and erect? Are they going to fall over? Are they going to get... They're going to start getting flumpy. And well, you're gonna start one. seeing. Look at um, this one. See that one's already starting to. You're gonna start seeing seeing these get crunchy. Yeah. So you can come you're up with some. You're gonna start seeing them losing their color. Lo losing their color. Hypothesis of what's going to happen. So not just drawing, but coloring in what's happening as well. Pizza. Into our pizza, our phonology pizza, definitely. You just so write your name in that phonology. Pizza. We will. We will keep up with you and our seeds, and we hope to see your seeds and all the things that you're learning. Remember, as you can, get outside. I know it's hard now that we're not allowed to go to the playgrounds and touch the play equipment equipment anymore. Wait, what? But, yeah, that's we can't go to playgrounds games? anymore. No, remember we're not allowed to touch playground equipment anymore because we don't want to spread germs to each other. I know. See, Isabel's upset. I'm sure you're upset too. I understand. But you can bike in the park. You can bike in the park and you can walk through the park as long as you keep a, a good respectable distance, which is six feet. Can so you can, you can't, you can touch your family members, but you should not be able to touch friends or anyone strangers. They should be more than an arm's length away. Can you touch the trees and the ground? I mean, you're gonna have to touch the ground if you're walking, aren't you? What about the trees? I don't know. 